So this is my book, A Guide to San Diego Seashells, written and illustrated by Nancy Lee, Artist by the Sea. And I'm going to page through the book and give you a bird's eye view, so to speak. So I wrote this book over the course of three and a half years. And the reason that it took so long was because there was no other books out on the market about San Diego seashells. So even though a lot of these shells are up and down the coast from um, British Columbia all the way down to Baja, California, these are the shells that you can specifically find when you're walking on the beach in San Diego. And that makes it a very unique book because there are no other books on the market about San Diego seashells. One of my favorite shells is called the Sunset Clam Shell. And every Sunset Clam Shell has a different pink, yellow, orange interior, which is why it's different like every sunset. Pismo clams, of course, originally came from Pismo Beach and were basically um, fished out to a certain extent. So it's rare to find these shells down here. The bean clams are little tiny, tiny shells that come up on the beach all the time and sanderlings and little shorebirds love to, to poke their bills into the sand and eat these shells. San Diego scallop is a shell that is very difficult to find here because it grows way off shore. So it, it very rarely washes up. And then of course scallop shells. Who doesn't love scallop shells? We have kelp scallops, calico scallops, rock scallops, and jingle shells, also known as mermaid's toenails. Mussel shells, it amazed me to find out that mussel shells can live for up to 20 years. Slipper shells, these are wonderful, they look like little shoes. Cup and saucer shells, sand dollars, who doesn't love sand dollars? Acorn barnacles, they put out little tentacles to feed. Volcano limpets, this is the volcano at the top. Lots of limpets, all kinds of little tiny limpets. But the giant owl limpet is one of the most unique because inside the limpet shell is actually the silhouette of an owl. Chestnut cowries, California trivia, these are rare. They're also known as coffee bean cowries by the locals here. Frog shells, which are scavengers, they're often found in lobster traps because they like to eat the bait put in the lobster traps. Killet's whelk. Wavy turban, one of my favorite. It's really a huge turban shell. And the architecture on the inside of seashells is really astonishing. Lewis moon shell, Norris top snail. It has a, a bright green interior, but the mollusk that actually lives in the Norris top shell is bright, bright orange red. Black turban snails, they're a popular shell for the hermit crabs. California bubble shells are found by the bay here. They're so fragile. Purple dwarf olive shells were used by the Native American Indians to decorate their baskets and as a form of, of money. California cone shells and horn shells, periwinkles, NASA, gem murex, and then at the back are my photographs done on paintings of seagrass. So the names of the shells are here, like the sea urchin and sand dollar family the scallop family, the limpets, the oyster shells, the slipper shells, the teacup shells, all the different little clam shells and mussels. Here's more limpets, wavy turbans, frog shells, kelet's whelk. Here's all the little um, snail shells and cone shells in that family. So you can see how small these are because it shows the actual size. And then at the back 
I've put a little note about how it's becoming harder and harder to find seashells on the beach. So the best way to collect seashells is to photograph them when you're at the beach and leave them where they are because they're an integral part of a healthy seashore life. So I hope that you buy my book. I encourage you to buy it. It supports my life as an artist. It supports education of our coastal environment, which is very important to me. And I hope that you've enjoyed this little tour of my book. Thank you very much.